An enormous mass of seaweed has grown to a staggering size in the Atlantic Ocean, raising concerns from scientists. Researchers say this year's bloom of sarcasm seaweed is much larger than previous seasons and it's roughly twice the width of the continental US. Scientists are worried about the environmental and health impact as the seaweed invades coastal ecosystems and covers beaches in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. Researchers have found that human activity and climate change are fueling these massive blooms of seaweed. Brian LaPointe is a research professor at Florida Atlantic University's Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. And he joins me now from Fort Pierce in Florida. Appreciate you being with us. Well, thank you for the invite. So a massive blob of seaweed spanning 5,000 miles is heading straight for the Florida Gulf Coast, so vast, in fact, that it can be seen from space. When do you expect it to hit the coast? And what might this signal for the critical spring break and, of course, the summer months ahead? Well, this, the uh, so-called blob of seaweed is this seaweed floating sargassum in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. And that is what we call the, the Great Atlantic Sargassum Belt. And that, that sargassum uh, seaweed is moving towards the west and will proceed to move through the Caribbean and up into the Gulf of Mexico and South Florida area in the coming months. And we typically uh, get the peak of that seaweed arriving in Florida uh, around midsummer uh, July is usually when it peaks. Yeah, I think I've been there when it's arrived. So, so why are we seeing such a massive blob of seaweed at this time? What's causing it? And how big a threat does it pose to residents and to sea life? Well, this is an unusual year in that this uh, sargassum bloom in the great atlantic sargassum belt started early it, it doubled in size between december and january uh in one month it doubled in size and was larger in january than it has ever been since this new region of sargassum growth began in 2011. so this is an entirely new oceanographic phenomenon uh, previously, the Sargasso was in the Sargasso Sea to the north, that is the central gyre of the North Atlantic Ocean, and would circulate in the currents around that as well as through the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. So this is a, a whole new thing. And this is the source of this Sargasso seaweed that is, is creating such a, a problem, really a catastrophic problem for for tourism in the Caribbean region where it piles up on beaches up to five or six feet deep on the beaches in some places. In fact, in Barbados, just last week they reported they need 1,600 dump trucks a day to clean the beaches of this seaweed to make it suitable for, for tourists and recreation on the beaches. And, you know, where it comes ashore in the mangroves, it, it, it comes in in such large quantities that it basically sucks the oxygen out of the water and creates what we refer to as dead zones. These are normally uh, nursery habitats for fisheries. And, and you know, once, once they're devoid of oxygen, uh, we have lost that habitat. Right. They are also harmful to seagrasses and coral reefs and uh, obviously to human health as well, because when they rot, they release toxic hydrogen sulfide gas. They have a high concentration of arsenic in the tissue. So you have to be very careful when you clean the beaches and try to reuse this for fertilizers or some other beneficial use. So what solutions are available to stop these massive seaweed invasions? Is there anything that can be done to disperse or break it up? Or, or do we just need to do what you've suggested, basically taking away truckloads of this seaweed? Well, 
at this point, that's all we can do. Um, efforts are being made in the Caribbean to construct booms, to hold it off the beach, and to get harvesting uh, boats to run along those booms and harvest it into barges where then it could be taken either to land to a suitable disposal site and dried and perhaps used for some purpose, or uh, a new project is looking at actually harvesting it at sea and sinking it to the bottom of the ocean. And in that way, sequestering carbon that is you know, used by photosynthesis in the seaweed, sending it to the bottom of the sea where it will be buried and in that way uh, sequester that carbon to kind of chip away at the CO2 buildup in the atmosphere. Brian Lapointe, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.